Welcome back, Blade Lovers, to this old sword with you. And today it's time to show some love and appreciation for real steel. Um, some of my favorite designs and usable, useful designs have come from real steel. <clears throat> These are five that I've singled out out of uh, maybe ten, nine, ten in the collection that I feel deserve some praise and I'm um, going to be going through them one by one but if you need to know more on any one of them the reviews are out there so check them out we have individual reviews on each of these blades where should I begin probably nearest this is a Chad Los Banos design he is um, influenced by both Asian martial arts as well as uh, law enforcement use. Uh, as I understand it, he's a law enforcement officer on Hawaii, in Hawaii. Um, and this is the Archangel, a beautiful Persian inspired blade that while the handle looks odd, is extremely ergonomically friendly. Um, first of all, the materials, um, this one is D2, and I don't know that they've made it in anything else since, and it may even have been discontinued, I'm not sure. First thing I'm noticing right now is the really interesting <clears throat> jimping on the uh, liner lock, and the cutout on the show side that gives you easy access. It's a flipper only. The flipper perfectly positioned, positively open every time. It sports a wire clip that is ambidextrous. Can easily be switched to the left side just by loosening one screw and slipping out the wire clip. I don't personally have any problems with wire clips, so leave it at that. Uh, some people don't like them. Uh, I don't mind them. It's, uh, it's a low profile, low carry clip. And, uh, you know, it doesn't show very much on the pocket. I'm not sure if there's a blacked out version of this. There might be, or might have been. Anyway, you can see by the shape of the blade, it has a upsweep, I'd call it a trailing point, um, with a slight Persian influence although we don't have the point very high that's a good thing the points right in line with the axis of the handle thumb fits perfectly here although there is no jimping um, ergos are just really really good on this knife um, it is positioned so that you can easily put the thumb over the top for point down it's a longish blade. It's coming in almost at four inches. Again, I'm not giving any specs today, so I can run through these relatively quickly. There's a lanyard hole, for sure. It's a G10, black G10 handle. It's got some nice texturing to it. And just all around, an extremely solid knife. I mean, you could EDC this all day long. I put a um, KME edge on it, and uh, the thing is sharp as all get out. Beautiful built-in guard because of the flipper and the cutout for the finger. No go forward position, but that's okay. Wide open construction with barrel spacers. Um, and a light knife. I mean, uh, I think this is coming in around four ounces. Uh, again, all those specs are on my other. I'm not going to run down specs today. Again, keep repeating myself, but that's the Archangel. Another larger knife coming up on four inches is the Ivan Braganitz designed Rokot. Not Rocket, but Rokot. And I believe that has something to do with thunder or loud noise. This one is uh, N690. 
There's Ivan's logo. He's designed for lots of companies besides Real Steel. He went as far as to spell his name in Russian on the pocket clip and he actually responded back to my review on this uh, indicating that that's why people couldn't figure it out. The Morse code spells his name in Russian. And uh, that he said that's his native language. I'm not sure if he actually is Russian. I think he might be Ukrainian. I'm not sure. Apologies if I got your nationality wrong, Ivan. But um, that Morse code is also the pattern on the handle. Very cool. A uh, backspacer with kind of a suspended bridge design there. You can see light coming through that backspacer. So that's kind of a neat feature. Jimping on the backspacer, plenty of jimping on the blade. This is a real all-purpose knife. Um, you can thumb flick it or f front flick it. Or you can use the um, double thumb studs. Um, yep, you can spidey flick it on the thumb stud or use the nail nick if you're good at that kind of thing. I happen to like the thumb studs the best. They're the most positive. Very neutral handle. Doesn't matter how you want to hold it. It's going to work for you. It's the thing I like about this. And yet the blade doesn't look menacing. It's pretty much a drop point utility. Sharpens up very nice, high flat grind. Fuller there. Uh, let's see if they have an accommodation here for a lanyard. Yes, they do. Barely made it out. There it is. Cut into the G10 backspacer. As I said, N690. Good solid steel, something used by Fox on most of their knives, and uh, even on the Fox made knives for uh, Bastinelli. So that's the Rocat. I saw that there is a real fancy version of this, an S35VN, and um, I forget what they use for the handle, uh, carbon fiber, I believe, from a seller in the um, I think Netherlands I'm guessing but um, been looking at those but they want about 135 for them this is coming in uh, significantly less by the way these are all budget level knives I'm what I'm calling budget is under well under a hundred so that's the Rocat uh, next let's go to this little guy this is the Metamorph Poltergeist Works design. No, I'm sorry. Boo-hoo. Ostop Hell design. Polish designer. Um, he's done a lot of different versions of this, and this has become a very popular knife as a front flipper. I got this from Indiana Knives, and I liked it because I'm not a huge fan of front flippers, although you're going to see at least one more coming up here. This is a back flipper, and it is a cool back flipper. They upped the materials on this version. I'm not sure if this was a special run or not. I have seen them around in a few other places, including White Mountain Knives. Um, but this is titanium handle with a S35 VN blade. And um, picked it up for a very good price. I think it was just a little over a hundred at the time. I was pretty blown away by the price considering the upping of the materials over the original which was in G10 and uh, either Sandvik or D2 can't recall. But Just a beautiful blade on this. Uh, I have a fixed blade that emulates the same exact blade shape. There's a fixed blade version of this. But in these materials, um, God, uh, look at the work that was done on this. You may like the original Metamorph, but this is just a real gem. There's a um, lanyard pin. Full deep pocket carry clip, which um, really helped me decide on this one. 
Unfortunately, we still have the dome head screws. Um, Civivi and other makers are starting to countersink their screws and use flathead, which is great. But uh, I haven't noticed it hang up very much in the pocket. It's a nice spring clip. I think it's simply a stainless clip. You can check that out. Yep, it's stainless. And, yep, that's titanium. A handy dandy little ferrous checker, my magnet there. Nicely sculpted handle. It's a lightweight knife, low profile. Um, excellent steel on this one. Um, relatively high flat grind. And um, again, the action on the back flipper is terrific. Again, you may be fixated on the front flipper. I know a lot of people are. That's what kind of made this knife and gave it its name. But uh, I really like this version of it. Enough said. Moving on. Here is the Poltergeist Works designed Citus Free. And it is free of any protrusions, flipper, or thumb studs to open it. I believe the original intention was for uh, locations where uh, they didn't allow one hand opening, and you would open it like that. You've got a nail nick, right? But I've tuned it so that little pressure on the blade, and I wouldn't rely on it heavily if your hand's wet, but you can use that little hole there, and you can actually roll it out most of the way. It's just a cool design. Um, someday I'm going to pick up a Citus maybe with one of the uh, illuminated handles and so forth that they have <clears throat> the, uh, the glow GID. It's a wide open design for the most part with a backspacer near the butt end of the knife. This one is micarta hence you see a little drying going on there some change in tone. Uh, you can use some mineral oil or vegetable oil to darken that up where if you use it every day the oils in your hand will darken it up. It's got a deep carry clip. Uh, it is not reversible that I can see. Um, pretty much deep carry again with the dome screws. This handle profile is so ergonomic. It's just it's a natural flow that curve in the handle. Uh, we've got a drop point blade coming up on about I think three and three quarter inches. It's not a short one. And again, um, a knife you could carry if you have restrictions anywhere in the world on opening with one hand since there's no protrusion. And it comes pretty tight. I needed to loosen and lube it to get it to open with one hand. But that is the Citus Free to set that aside and get to this unusual guy. This is the Epon. Again, a Chad Los Banos, Banos design. Um, it is what I'd have to call an end flipper, for lack of a better term. Yeah, interesting point, but knowing that um, Chad likes to design martial arts oriented knives, that can be a skull crusher or a glass breaker and that is stainless. This um, end flipper you gotta work on just a little bit, not too much different than a front flipper. Try that again, make sure I got it. I use kind of a downward angle to get that to open up. This is a Japanese inspired design. Epon means one point. If you're sparring in a Japanese martial arts tournament and they shout Epon, whether that's kendo or judo or karate, um, they would shout. The referee would shout out "ipon." That's my introduction to the term many years ago. It has a two-layer G10 handle. Different colors you can get. This one is um, kind of an olive green underneath. Look at the back spacers. They're pins. It's like a bridge of pins. Um, I happened to see LTK take this one apart. <laughs> the pins were all over the place. They're captured 
in there. You have to set them in and kind of, once you take this knife apart, they're all over the place. Thus, I have not taken this knife apart yet. There's good weight relieving inside. Far as I can see, yeah. Some sizable holes there on the show side and um, not too many on the liner locking side. Cool thing about this knife is that it's like a stick when it's closed. That blade is completely enclosed inside. Again, I did a full review on this, so check it out if you're interested in the knife. Deep carry clip, as I said. And we, you possibly could use that end barrel spacer as a lanyard wrap, lanyard pin. Um, it's possible. I don't know that I'd try it. It's pretty close to the blade there. Anyway, um, handle, uh, handle blade ratio is pretty neat. Comes out almost to the very end there. Well centered. Um, did I say it's N690? Yes, it is. N690 steel. There is the Chattel Espanos logo. Very stick like. You can hold this in any one of a number of positions. It's easy to move around. These give you a lot of grip. And you do have. Uh, some cut in jimping here that's quite sharp on the frame. Nowhere else. It's a very ergo friendly knife because it is that Japanese stick light uh, handle design. So the Epon by Real Steel. Well, let's bring them out for a final showing, shall we? in the rocot and last but certainly not least let's stick them over on the side here the metamorph um, didn't do any other comparisons but for comparison there's the rat one I'll kind of hover it you can see that the rat one's big but not quite as big as that uh, Archangel if that's helpful for you but I figured uh, with all these knives on the table I'm not going to bring other ones out for comparison well time is running long I don't want to hit 20 minutes so uh, looks like we're at uh, about 18 minutes right now and I will bid you a farewell hope you come back soon and don't forget to like this video and subscribe this old sword signing out